Alrighty, so here's the switchboard that was wired in the previous video. There's a wee bit of dust in there. There will be a couple of things I'll be changing as we go. I don't believe we need all of these now. Yeah, and we'll see because obviously some of the sockets in this house were run a single cable from the switchboard straight to the socket. So those ones that were doubled up in fuses, we might just have to leave, but I'll try and separate them out as much as possible uh, without getting any RCD faults. Couple of things we'll also be going through on the switchboard setup here is we'll be adding our, obviously our MEN link, main earth, main neutral. We've got a whole lot of cabling to get in here and get neat and tidy. Let's get into it. So the first thing we wanna do is take measurements off the back of it uh, so we can get this flush in the wall and make sure it fits perfectly square. Rightio, so I've got a wee tape measure here. Don't laugh at me, this isn't my work one. I've got no idea amongst these tools where it is. 330 wide and 360 high. 330, 360 high, the base is about here, so we're going to rip the scotia off, and then 330 comes out to about here. So again, what I'm going to do, rip all this crap off, after the video I'm going to do a bit of plastering, I'm going to do the rest of the house, and paint it, repaint it. So I'll get some tools out, get a hammer and a nail puller, and whack these off. I'll do that off camera and show you guys the aftermath. The other thing to be aware of is that a lot of the time they used to use asbestos material here around the switchboards just as fireproofing in the past. Rightio, so now we're going to measure from this asbestos board here down. We'll go down 303 from the other bit. So this board here, we'll go that way 306, there's our line that I just drew, I had to off camera, bloody holding the camera in one hand, pencil in the other, so unfortunately it's only drawing a line though. The other line actually lines up with the edge of this wallpaper here quite nicely. So we can cut down to here and all the way out to the wallpaper there. What I'm going to do, got my reslip saw, cut it out. Uh, one thing to be aware of is studs, so don't cut studs. The reason I've chosen this side sounds hollow, that side does not. Rightio, one thing I'm going to do before I start cutting is get in here with some shaving foam and put it over the suspected asbestos material that I'll be cutting through. So shaving foam's in there, always wear a mask, open this door as well. In a couple of minutes just to ventilate the area. So unfortunately the reset didn't work really well so I got the skelly out now. Just a wee update guys. So I had a bit of trouble with the skelly as well getting into tight places. So what I did was drill some pilot holes, put the reset in there and cut them out. Now I've got this bottom one done. Unfortunately all my batteries have died at this point so what I'm going to have to do is fire up the generator and put them on charge. So that hole I just did is ample room to get through at least four more cables. I'm going to be rerunning the hot water cylinder in 2.5, rerunning both heat pumps and also putting a feed for an alarm. What I'm going to do now is stick a drawer wire up and I'll leave it tied off up there. Guys, if you're ever going to invest in spade bits, get one of these DeWalt ones. It doesn't snag on nails and bend the ends of it either. Before I move on guys, what I've done is shoved a couple of drawer cables in here. All right, tidy the area up and then we'll be ready to mount the board. Now before we move on, to mounting the board, what I want to do is get rid of some of this green sleeving and replace it with heat shrink. I'm only doing that for personal preference, it's not a requirement or anything. So I got some of this stuff here, just use the gas torch, shrink it down onto the cables. One of the reasons is the greenness in these has sort of gone out of some of them and they're almost black. Some of the earth's a yellow green stripe, sweet as. Alrighty, so we've got the switchboard here. Because it's been sitting a while and it's got a wee bit of dust in it, 
get the vac out and give it a bit of a dust clear out. Dust is one thing we don't want accumulating in switchboards. So if you do find you've got a dusty board, vac it out or blow it out with some compressed air because it does become a fire hazard. Now another tool I carry around everywhere is a paintbrush. And no, this isn't for painting. I use this a lot on appliances too. Um, this is just getting tight areas and just get the dust free and moving. All right, we're ready to mount the switchboard. We'll line this up on the wall and we'll locate exactly where these cables are dropping down so we can knock these plastic panels out in line with the cables there. Looking across the top, it's going to be the first four panels in I'm going to knock out. Then I'm going to miss two. And then I'm going to knock out two. And then I'm going to leave these ones in for future proof. For pulling down these cables i will be adding fire pro to this board and i don't want to gunk up all of these slots so i'm able to knock them out in the future without disturbing the fire pro that's originally in there so to knock out these squares all you do is tap them with your pliers all done now carefully pull these out make sure there's no jagged edges hanging around that the cables can snag on. Now if there are any jagged bits, like in this corner here, just get the rough bit of your pliers and pull down on it and pull it out like you're filing it. Make sure you're not filing it into the switchboard. That's what she looks like. That's where our cables are going to enter the board. Now what we do, bunch the cables up and pull them through here. Those two data cables will be staying behind the switchboard above it so we can access them later. Right, so this is the hard bit. It is a bit tedious sometimes with the amount of cables here and the small amount of holes in the board. So you might find that you have to knock out a couple more panels. I might do the majority of this part off camera, but basically probably start with a couple and feed them in to where you want them and just Work your way through all the cables, get them into the board. I'll restart the video when I've got them all in the board. So some people prefer to twist the cables up, just so you don't lose the neutrals and the phases, uh, so you can get the LCD pattern in right. But that does come at a cost of aesthetics. Don't twist cables as you're throwing them in the board. Keep them nice and straight. If they're behind the bunch at the top up here, so say these ones in behind here, then as you put them through, make sure they're still behind the cables in here. It just makes it a whole lot easier to work with once the switchboard's in. Right, sweet. So all the cables are through. They're not twisted. I took my time doing it. And now I should be able to easily just maneuver the board into position. Righty yeah, guys, so before we slide her in, what we want to do is see this lip around the side here. We want to take that off. This white surround here is where, for new builds, where the jib actually sits on top of it, but because the jib was here first, we pull that off. Rightio guys, so just a quick update. What happened when I went to push the board in, is it wouldn't quite go in at the top because these cable entries were far too far forward um, from the old board. So what I've gone and done, pulled every single cable up into the roof space, and then I've re-drilled all of the holes further back. Now, for those existing holes that I'm never gonna use, I'm gonna fill them all up with this fire curl sealant. So I've gunked all those holes up that I'm never gonna use again. And that has pretty well stopped the draft coming through. Apologies guys, I've had to go and get the torch. Unfortunately, it's a dismal day today. Yesterday there was a emergency medical event I had to attend. I didn't get the chance to finish the switchboard, unfortunately. But anyway, we're back today. Now, all this white insulation, I've rerouted cables up in the ceiling, made it a lot tidier up there. Don't need to go into too much depth than that. But as you can see, there's a lot more cable length here now to play with, which is excellent. I'm just gonna go strip all of these back. I'm gonna throw the switchboard in. I'll do it all off camera. So that there is pretty well in place. Now what I'm gonna do is level it and fix it into the wall there. So you'll see in the corners here, you got these two indents. There for screws. What you want to do is bring the face of the switchboard, the front part here, out in line with the jib and just hold it there while you drill it in. I just leave these screws sticking out a wee bit so I can get them all in and then come back and re-level it properly. That actually is pretty bloody straight to me. Now before I start fitting the switchboard off, I want to have a good bloody clean up. So a couple of things I'll be doing. This bar back here is the earth bar. All the earth cables go into the earth bar. 
we're going to have an MEN link, which is a green 6mm earth cable that loops from the earth bar here into the neutral bar above it. That MEN link is to earth the neutrals. Well, I did just disconnect these three cables. If you can see where the screws screwed onto the cables, that is what you want. All right, not too tight, but tight enough that there's a good firm grip on the cable. See, it hasn't broken the cores. The other thing is the sub circuits that are from each of these circuit breakers, the neutrals of those will go into the corresponding RCD bars. This red cable here is the ripple relay control cable. That's the night rate for water heating. Also used to be for night store heaters, used to come off this cable too. This is only a 1.5 mil cable on my switchboard. I will be rerunning this cable. I'll be upgrading it to a 2.5 as I want to upgrade the hot water cylinder either to a mains pressure or get gas hot water, I haven't decided, but I definitely want mains pressure hot water. And so that requires a three kilowatt element, which is 1.5 mils, definitely not gonna be sufficient for that. So there's a number of cables that will be replaced over time, but for now, we will hook it in as it was originally. First thing, grab some long nose pliers probably be needing these. What I want to do is match up all of the cables and decide which RCD they're going on. First of all, I'm going to suss out the main earth. Now there's two 6mm earths here. One of them is the meter box bonding earth and one of them is the actual main earth cable. Now it's not a requirement in the switchboard to have a main earth label on the main earth cable, but I do believe it is best practice. I always keep them labeled. What I'm going to do in a future video, show you guys how to use a fly lead and correctly identify and test the main earth cable itself. Now what I'm going to do is put these in the big terminals I'll fold them in half so there's a lot more surface area for contact should a fault occur right so those two are ready to go in at any point in time I won't do them just now it's probably better if I got some of these cables out of the road first one I'm going to start on is the main neutral coming into the board so I'll tidily bend it up and around make sure that when you're bending these cables you don't put them on anything near a 90 degree bend or more always best practice to keep your loops on these cables as less tight as possible right so i'm going to cut it right where i've got my thumb what i like to have is a nice meaty flat head so we can get in and torque these screws up a bit next one put the cable in for the main switch run it directly down there swing it out let it go down a centimeter from the top so where my finger is i'm going to cut the cable strip her off now remembering from my first video, we don't want to twist these ones up that go into your switch gear. Instead, flatten them out a wee bit. That way, more surface area is making contact with the clamp terminals inside these breakers. Slide her in there. Perfect. Screw her in. And then, talk it up a wee bit with our flathead. You can get circuit breaker um, screwdrivers that are a posi driver with a flathead built into them, which are ideal for talking these up. So I just realized that I missed it on the video, but what I did was get my pliers in there and squeeze it flat, just like these ones that aren't twisted up when they go into the top of the breaker there, top of the main switch. Anyway, I'll sort this camera out properly and we'll uh, carry on with this hot water cylinder ripple control cable. Peel this bad boy back. So one of these cables here is going to go into the top of the breaker for your hot water. Slide this cable in nicely on the other cables. Just one end, doesn't matter what end of the cable it is. What I like to do with this is uh, twist it up, fold it over. So twist her up, fold her over nicely. That way it compensates for the surface area lost as you twist it up. Just make sure it goes in flat and you put it in the top of the breaker. Making sure every time you put a cable in that it's not gonna pull out. So do the old pull test on it. And the other thing is that your insulation is flush with the top of the clamps in the breaker. I'm not sure if you can see in there. The other end of this ripple control cable. So what I'm gonna do for another video is put a switch in here so I can select whether it's on night rate or day rate. And knowing that, I'm gonna to want to connect this up to the hot water cylinder cable, but I'm gonna to want to leave ample length on this cable get down into this area here. I'll route this one in the same way I did with the last cable. So what I got here is the hot water cylinder feed cable that goes out to the hot water cylinder 
and one of the ends off the ripple control relay. What I'll do is I'll put them into this strip connector and that there will slot behind the bar. Twist these up, fold them in half, screw the connector up, do the pull test and then this here, tuck in behind the bar just so it's out of sight. If you're looking up above, you can definitely see it there. Turn it upside down. So there's no chance of accidentally poking a screwdriver in there or something. Not that you should be working on a switchboard live. Alrighty, oh guys. So, next thing we're going to be working on is the oven feed. Now this here. Yep, that's the oven cable. If I give that a wee pull, that's these three cables here. Now we'll get the earth in. Push it right down the back there. Shape it nicely. That's that earth done. Neutral. Go second one in. That there's going to be for the MEN link. Line that up as neat as possible. So that neutral's in there. Next one's the oven feed. I will leave the oven feed out for now. Radio. So next thing I'm going to work on is down here. These three circuit breakers. So the phases, all the feeds go into the top of these breakers. And then the neutrals will go into the corresponding RCD bar up top. So what I've decided the next thing I'm going to do is get all of the earths into the earth bar down the back before these front bars get filled up. The easiest way to do that is go and pair all the cables up now so I don't have to search for neutrals when doing these RCD bars. So I'll pair each neutral and phase up. The earths can just hang separately. Right, so as you can see, I've only twisted them down near the bottom uh, just because I don't want them twisted once we fit them off. Generally, all of this excess cable is going to be cut off anyway. So next thing I'm going to do is throw all of these earth cables into the earth bar behind here. Now just quickly, as I'm going and installing these into the earth bar, I'm making sure that all the 1mm ones are folded over nicely like that, and that any 1.5mm or bigger cables are twisted up like that and then screwed in. Alrighty guys, so I've got all the earths in the back there, and what I'm going to do now is put an MEN link in, and they go between the neutral bar and the earth bar. Now the MEN must be 6mm and it must be green in colour. So the MEN link at least 6mm, so that's always the green cable that goes between your neutral bar and your earth bar, not the RCD bars. MEN link's in, the earths are in, I've put a couple cable ties on them, get them tidy. Next thing I'll be doing is putting the hot water cylinder neutral into the neutral bar here. So that's the hot water cylinder phase we put in the breaker. Next thing will be I'll be putting the oven bead in there and then the sub main into this 20 amp breaker here. And the sub main neutrals will also go into the neutral bar. So I'll get on with those and I'll do those off camera. All of our non RCD circuits are in. This one here is for an alarm cable in the future. Best practice is to have one feed per breaker. Um, obviously Obviously there's a retrofit house, nothing's going to be perfect. Some of these cables in the house, I have noticed they have been ring fed, which is very odd for a house in New Zealand. So I'll have to get those ones right and into the same breakers and on the same RCDs, otherwise we're going to have some RCD faults later on when we go to live in. So the first thing I'm going to do is sort out this RCD block here with the spar and two socket circuits. So all of the reds will go into these. And then all of the blacks will go into whichever corresponding RCD bar. So I've set my multimeter to ohms. And what it'll do is beep when there's a closed circuit. Which means it'll beep when I identify which RCD one it's for. So it's RCD4. So now off camera I'm going to route some cables down to RCD4. And the blacks will be routed up to the neutral bar for that RCD up here. I'll just show you guys a quick way to flatten out these cables and get all the twists and kinks out of them. Is just to hold it one end, get the knife edge of your hand and just run it down the cable pretty firmly. Might have to do it one or two times. And that there gets all the kinks out for you. Sweet as. So I've connected the feeds into the breakers here. And then the corresponding neutrals from them have gone into this neutral bar here. So what I'll do next is this next RCD and then follow on from that and do the same with that one. So the phases will that go into this these circuit breakers here. The corresponding neutrals will go into this neutral bar, RCD neutral bar here. And then same for that one to there and that one to there. I'm going to do all of this off camera. Now remember, every single time you fit the cable off, ensure 
that it's clamping down onto the copper no matter what it's in and always make sure you do the pull test on each cable the other thing as i go through i'm writing down what cable goes into what piece of switch gear so i can label the switchboard uh, following fit off as you can see down here on these two far ones here these have both ac units but as the previous electricians wired them backing them off socket circuits in the near future these two will be rerun righty oh guys so she's all done As you can see, we're all in nice and tidy. Now the next couple of things I'm going to do, I'm going to get some Fire Pro, make sure the penetrations in the switchboard are fireproof. Uh, and then the next thing I'll be doing is going through the testing. I'm not going to do it on camera for you guys in this video. I'll go through one of these in a future video. So this stuff's the Fire Krill that I showed you earlier in the video. Just going to go up into the holes here and blast them all with this Fire Pro. Hopefully you can all see. And then I'm gonna go right the way along and fill all the gaps. Righto guys, so just quickly, I have thrown in some Fire Pro here. Almost forgot to take this video. Now during live then and testing of the switchboard, I did find two faults in the house. Number one being this waste disposal here. It's not compatible with the RCD, so there is some earth leakage in that. I'll probably end up replacing it. And the other thing is this ceiling fan here. Yeah, it trips the RCD as soon as there's power on the circuit. So I've disconnected it. I'll have to look into that as well. But everything else is perfectly fine. Rightio, sweet. Testing's done, live means done, faults are done. It's time to throw the cover on the board. Any electrician who installs these regularly will tell you to throw these screws out. They are rubbish. What I'll be using is just super screws, just square drive ones like those. Now a good thing to be aware of when throwing these covers on is if your cables aren't tidy, just make sure you're not jamming them in these screw holes as you do the screws up. Sweet as, so once the board's on, you want to fill this gap in. Some of these blank panels that come with the board, measure them out, they out to where my thumb is. It's a wee bit more than the breaker because the main switch is slightly moved over but we'll shift it to the left again. So I'm going to be cutting these two small ones off the, the edge of it. Alrighty, so now that's in. Last thing to do is label it. Now we'll go and grab my labels. So these here are the labels the switchboard comes with. I'll try and use these ones and not have to use the label maker. Uh, these ones are all cut to size perfectly for the breakers. 